Hey guys, welcome back to Caribbean Toots. We are continuing the chemistry syllabus. We are at section A, 2.3, and this is separating the components of mixtures. We have a lot to cover today. We're looking at simple distillation, fractional distillation, simple filtration, paper chromatography, and the separation funnel. So we have a lot to cover, and we're going to go straight into it. Okay, so what's the purpose of having these separation methods in the first place? In the previous video, we looked at um, suspensions, colloids, solutions, the different kinds of mixtures. But in the event that you want to separate the component parts of these mixtures, you have to have a method. So depending on the kind of mixture that you have, you'll choose one of these methods to separate the solute from the solvent. Okay, so we're first going to look at simple filtration. We're going to label this diagram, then we're going to talk about the process. Okay, now in this diagram, here we have a funnel. We have some filter paper. And this is some residue that we have. This is the residue from the mixture that we had in the filter paper. This is the solid and liquid mixture in the filter paper. Right? This is a conical flask. And this is the filtrate. Great. So we've labeled our diagram. So what we want to do right now is talk about what exactly happens during simple filtration. So you're going to put your filter, your filter funnel over a conical flask and you're going to insert some filter paper inside your filter funnel. That's what we have here. So we have our filter paper inside our funnel and the funnel is over the conical flask. You're going to pour your solid and li liquid mixture inside the filter paper and you're going to watch the process take place. So in simple filtration, what actually happens is we use this method to separate a liquid from a solid and liquid mixture. The liquid is going to pass through the filter paper and the funnel into the conical flask as the filtrate and the solid is going to be left behind in your filter paper as the residue. So this simple filtration method is used to separate solid and liquid from um, a solid and liquid mixture where the solid does not dissolve in the, in the liquid. So we call this mixture a suspension. Okay, great. So the method that we're going to look at now is paper chromatography. And this method is used to separate different solutes that are present in a solution. Typically, these solutes are colored, for example, your inks. Um, different colored solutes are dissolved in a solvent for your inks that are in like pins. When you use paper chromatography, you can just separate the different colored solutes. So we're going to label this diagram now. Okay, what we have here outlined in blue is our filter paper. Or you can also call it absorbent paper. We also have the absorbent paper hanging on a glass rod. Here we have a beaker with our solvent. So this is a beaker with our solvent, a liquid solvent. So what I want to look at first is labeling the actual absorbent paper itself. So what you do before you put the absorbent paper in the experiment um, beaker, you're going to draw a line a few centimeters from the bottom of the paper, and this line is going to be your baseline. The purpose of the baseline is the starting point of the ink that you're trying to separate the different solutes from. So you dip, you're going to dot your ink, put a drop of ink on this baseline. During the experiment, you're going, to, you're going to dip the absorbent paper and make sure that the, end, the bottom of the paper is in the solvent, but make sure that the baseline is not touching the solvent. The baseline should be a little bit above 
the, sol the level of the sol the top level of the solvent. So as the solvent rises of the absorbent paper, it is going to be carrying the solute along with it. And as it carries the solute, the different solutes in the solution are going to be separated. Why? You can see I have a red dot here, and that would mean that this solute in the ink has stronger attraction to the absorbent paper or is less soluble in the solvent. So we say that the one that's closest to the baseline is the slowest moving dye in this solution or the slowest moving solute. So we call this slow. As the experiment progresses, there are going to be more separation of different colors of the solutes in the solution or different colored dyes in the ink. And you're going to see that as the final color is separated from the solution, this final color we can say is fast. It's fast moving, why? Because it's more soluble in the solvent, this solute is more soluble in the solvent and it's less attractive to the absorbent paper. Now, the more attractive it is to the absorbent paper, it's not going to get very far, which is why the red dye didn't travel very far. Now, if the blue dye is less absorbent to the absorbent paper, it's going to travel faster, especially if it's more soluble in the solvent. Now, as time passes, you're going to see that no more dye is left, and the final level that the solvent that the solvent travels is going to be called the final distance that your solvent travels is going to be called your solvent front. Okay, great. So now we're going to be looking at separation funnel. In a separation funnel, the purpose is to separate two liquids or liquids that are immiscible. For example, a mixture of water and oil, which is a suspension. So we can use separation funnel to separate these two components. So in a separation funnel, first I'm going to identify the labels on the diagram, then we can talk about how the process works. Here we have a separating funnel. And this is the pipe that turns the top of the separating funnel on or off. So you can see this is a little pipe. This is our collecting or conical flask. So in the separating funnel, you're going to pour your mixture of the two immiscible liquids. And what you'll notice that is going to happen is the liquid with the higher density settles to the bottom and the liquid with the lower density settles at the top. For example, oil and water. If you had a mixture of oil and water, you would have water settling at the bottom of the separating funnel. So we can call this water or the one with the higher density higher density and we can call this oil or the liquid with the lower density okay so as soon as those two liquids separate and find their their level in the separating funnel, whether it's at the bottom because of high density or at the top because of low density. You're going to turn the pipe on. You can just turn the pipe and allow the liquid with the higher density to drip into this flask. So what we have collecting in this flask so far is the liquid with the higher density, in this case water. And as soon as the water, also the separating funnel is finished, you turn off the pipe, switch off your flask, and you can allow the oil or the liquid with the lower density to drip into the flask. And then you have two immiscible liquids separated in two different flasks. So the function of the separation funnel, again, is to separate two immiscible liquids. Okay, great. So we have covered simple filtration, paper chromatography, separating funnel. Now we're going to cover simple distillation and fractional distillation. Now the purpose of simple distillation is to separate and collect 
the liquid solvent from a liquid solid um, solution. Uh, we can use methods like evaporation and crystallization to collect the solid, but your syllabus doesn't require us to look at that. So we're going to look at the method by which you collect the solvent from the liquid solid solution. So again, simple distillation, you're collecting the solvent from the liquid solid solution. Okay, so first, label diagram. Here we have a distillation flask. Thermometer, a Leibig condenser, and a collecting flask. So in this distillation flask, what we have is a solution, a solid liquid solution. For example, some seawater, and the aim of this is to collect some pure water. So in this experiment, what we have is a distillation flask that has our salt water solution and the heat is being applied. We have a thermometer to, make, to help us maintain the temperature of the experiment in the distillation flask. It's good to note that the boiling point of your solvent must always be lower than the boiling point of your solute. Why? Because you're trying to you're trying to allow the solvent to evaporate and be collected in this flask. If the boiling point of the solute was lower than the boiling point of the solvent, you'll be collecting the solute, and that's not what we want. We don't want salt, we want water. So we have to make sure that the boiling point of our water is lower than the boiling point of our um, solute, which is the salt, and that is true. The boiling point of water is lower than salt. So our solution is boiling in the distillation flask at this point, and because our solvent has a lower boiling point than our solute, our solvent is going to start to rise, so it's going to start to evaporate. And in this case, our solvent is water. So we have some water vapor rising, some steam rising. As the steam rises, it collects in the fractionating, it collects at this level of the fractionating column in the condenser and it starts to, it starts to pass through the condenser. Now how the Leibig condenser works is that water is pumped in at the bottom and water is pumped out at the top. So the purpose of moving this water in the Leibig condenser over this hot steam that just evaporated from the distillation flask is to cool this steam so that we can have some liquid. So we don't want to be collecting gas, we want to collect liquid. So we have gas evaporating in the distillation flask, and this gas collects right at the condenser. The condenser cools it. You're moving from gas to liquid, condensation. So the condenser cools this gas to form some liquid, and the liquid runs down the Leibig condenser and collects in the collecting flask. So that's how simple distillation works. Simple distillation is used to separate a solvent from a solution. Okay, so our final method of separation that we're going to look at today is fractional distillation. So the purpose of fractional distillation is to separate two or more miscible liquids that have very similar boiling points. For example, trying to separate a solution of ethanol and water. The boiling point of water is 100 degrees Celsius and the boiling point of ethanol is about 78 degrees Celsius. So we use the method of fractional distillation to separate two miscible liquids with similar boiling points. So here we have our round flask. We have our fractionating column. This is a section that looks like a bundle of beads is our fractionating column. Our thermometer. Our Leibig condenser. And our collecting flask. Alright, so let's get into it. So this time around, our thermometer is going to help us maintain the temperature of the boiling point of the liquid that has the lower boiling point. So if our mixture was ethanol and water, 
We're going to try and maintain the temperature inside the fractionating column at about 78 degrees Celsius. So we say inside this we can say it's roughly showing 78 degrees Celsius. If we're using the mixture ethanol and water, of course. Our fractionating column is a cluster of glass beads that increases the surface area for condensation of the liquid with a higher boiling point. So let's explain what exactly is going on here. So we have our round flask and inside our round flask we have our solution of ethanol and water. What happens is that inside the fractionating column, remember we're trying to maintain 78 degrees Celsius. So both the water and ethanol are rising at 78 degrees Celsius. Ethanol passes, I'm going to use I'm going to use orange for ethanol and purple for water. So we have ethanol. Ethanol is orange, ethanol is rising because the, the solution is boiling. So we have ethanol gas rising up the fractionating column. Ethanol is going to pass the glass beads and rise further. Now, as ethanol rises further, it's going to collect in the condenser. We're going to move this way. Remember, the temperature is 78 degrees Celsius, the boiling point of ethanol. So ethanol is moving through the condenser. The condenser cools the ethanol gas that has risen and allows it to condense, forming ethanol liquid. And ethanol now collects in this collecting flask. Great job, we collected ethanol. But what happened to the water? Now the water also rises. You remember evaporation can take place at any temperature and it's increased by an increase in temperature. So water is rising, but guess what? As water rises and reaches the fractionating column with the glass beads, it starts to cool. Why? Because the temperature isn't 100 degrees Celsius. It's not hot enough for the water to rise past the fractionating column and collect in the collecting flask. So water rises, condenses at the fractionating column and drips back into the round flask. So whereas the ethanol rises, passes the fractionating column, goes through the lightweight condenser, condenses and drops in this collecting flask, water rises and condenses at the fractionating column because it's not hot enough for water to rise any further. And water drips back into this round flask. Great, so what did we learn today? We learned that in simple filtration, we use this method to separate solid and liquid um, suspensions where the solid does not dissolve in the liquid. Paper chromatography we use to separate several solutes that are in a solution. Usually they are of different colors. Separating funnels is used to separate immiscible liquids. Simple distillation is used to collect a solvent from a solid liquid solution. And fractional distillation is used to separate two, in, two miscible liquids that have similar boiling points. All right, so that wraps up this video, guys.